Hi there! As you might have seen in our video on bass drum sounds, muffling is a great tool to quickly adjust the sound of our drums to certain musical settings or different acoustics. In this video I will show you the 5 coolest muffling techniques I know, not only to get rid of unwanted overtones, but also to focus the attack or to really control the sustain of a drum. What you hear from behind the drum set is very different from what a microphone picks up directly at the drum head. You'll get a lot more overtones if you close mic a drum and you can't just tune those away. So when you're sound checking a close mic drum set, it's generally a good idea to have the drum sound in your headphones so you can actually hear what the microphone picks up. Muffling directly where the microphone is pointing at will also affect the sound more than putting your muffling a little bit away from that spot. The last thing is the amount of muffling you use. If you put a lot of stuff on your drum, it will not only reduce the overall volume, but the pitch might also drop a little bit. This is the most popular muffling technique. You either put some gaff tape or moon gel on your drum head. For me, gaff tape is more versatile, it's cheaper, and I can also use it for other stuff, like taping cables to the floor or securing the edges of my drum carpet. One very common way of using gaff tape is to partially fold it in on itself so it sticks up in the middle. This enhances the dampening effect a little bit. I prefer rolling it up though. It's faster and just much more flexible since I can not only use different sizes, but also roll it up multiple times to make it heavier. I can also reposition it very easily, which helps to dial in the amount of muffling. The more I move it towards the middle of the drum, the more it obstructs the movement of the drum head. Here are a few examples. You can also put another piece of tape on the rolled up piece of tape, just to make sure everything stays in place and there are no weird sounds going on. Downside is that the tape is much harder to reposition or remove now. So called control rings are plastic rings that are available in different sizes and thickness. Evans calls them E-rings, Remo calls them O-rings and Aquarian calls them studio rings. You just put them on your drum and you're good to go. They have a very distinct sound, obviously less overtones, but also a very focused attack. Make sure that your rings stay completely flat, otherwise they will rattle on the drum. If you play outside and it's windy, you'll better secure them with some gaff tape. Control rings are pretty cheap but it's even cheaper to use an old drum head and cut it out yourself. You can also cut up a control ring and only use part of it. This sound is mostly used in the studio, but you can also see live drummers do it from time to time. Just cover the complete drum head with a kitchen towel or something similar. Now while this probably sounds totally awful to you, it can sound really great with a microphone and some magic from the sound engineer. Um, and it's often the way to go if you're looking for a vintage sound or really dead sounding drums in general, uh, let's say for some alternative singer-songwriter stuff or a Beatles tribute band. Make sure to have some cloth pins, clamps or magnets ready so everything stays in place. You also can get different sounds by using very thin fabric or not covering the drum completely. Here's an example. This little trick is great if you want a little bit less sustain without sacrificing too many overtones. You take a cymbal felt and some tape and attach it to the rim of the drum. 
it kind of works like a noise gate. After the initial hit, the felt is light enough to not obstruct the movement of the drum head too much, and then it cuts the sustain very gently. You get a more drastic effect by putting the felt more towards the middle of the drum, or by just using a bigger or a heavier felt. Now this is my favorite drum muffling hack ever, since you can really dial in the sustain of the drum in two seconds. You've probably been in a situation where the sound engineer goes like, hey man, your, tom your toms sound great, but they're just a little bit too long, can you do something about that? And yeah, I mean, there are some options to get rid of some sustain, like uh, tuning differently, or uh, putting more muffling on the drum head, or muffling the razzle head, and so on. But here's by far the quickest and best sounding solution. You attach two rolled up pieces of tape either to the rim or directly to the drum head. Then you take a strip of fabric and put it on the tape. The more you go towards the middle, the less sustain you get without sacrificing too much of your drum sound. Check it out. These were the five muffling techniques I find most useful, especially the last one. But please, try out all kinds of stuff. There are no rules and it's also super fun to come up with really unique sounds. As always, feel free to comment, like and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe for more drum hacks. Bye!